Hey Shooby Doodlers, how are you doing? <laughs> well it's day, I'm, I've lost count. Uh, I think I have five, five days? <laughs> I don't know how long I have to go um, to get this uh, artwork finished. And so everything's going well. And um, I had a day off yesterday, you can see that video here. Um, so we went to Hereford, which is, I don't know, about sort of 40 minutes away from where I live. Um, and it's where the uh, we go to get our car serviced and so we took the day off I had a wander around Hereford which is very nice in the sunshine it's a very old cathedral town city <laughs> if, a, if a town in Britain has a cathedral it is officially a city and so you have somewhere like St. David's in Wales, which is well, yeah, pretty much a village, really, but it's got a cathedral. And so uh, it is a officially a city. And we have in the Forest of Dean, where I live, we have um, a church in Newland. And it's a very old church. With, you know, sort of, well, you know, hundreds of years old, hundreds and hundreds of years old. Probably a thousand, more than a thousand, I should imagine. Um, and uh, that's called the Cathedral of the Forest, but it isn't actually officially a cathedral. So it was <laughs> and it's in a tiny, tiny little village um, with this enormous church, which is, uh, you know, and how they, how they keep it up, I really don't know and who's paying for it. And it all gets very complicated, these things. So, um, so yeah, we did that. And now I am painting away again. It's Saturday. And I'm just getting those kind of faces pointed at. You can see Penny now has a little baby called Billy. And, hmm, it's time to change the nappy. <laughs> nappy, you maybe call it a diaper. I've never understood how to pronounce that. I think Americans call Call it a, a, a diaper, diaper, diaper. It's spelled di diaper, isn't it? But I think you pronounce it diaper. And uh, I remember the rug rats on the TV used to call them diapies. So, um, yeah. Uh, so where are we now? So um, what to talk about today? Well, Nancy Hamati came up with yet another really good question. And she asks, when you plan a book like this, do you set a number of copies you must sell in order to be successful? I mean, just creating the book is success in itself, but there is the financial side. So what is financial success with a book like this one? Thanks, you. Well, Nancy, that is a really, really good question. And this book is um, a bit different to what I normally do. That, like I said, it, I started this whole thing last Sunday, so today's Saturday, so I've been actually <laughs> solid for six days. And uh, and it sort of came to me in a, a flash, and I've been thinking, oh, shall I, shan't I? And it came to me in a flash that this is essentially a, a vanity project. And one of the reasons I've been putting it off is because I couldn't commercially justify it. Uh, as a children's book author because I'm not convinced it's a children's book and I think if I went to publishers children's book publishers they go mm. and if I went to kind of novelty book publishers they get, might go oh it's a children's book and so commercially I've always thought this is a bit <laughs> on the edge I've always felt it is it is commercial and I've always felt it's got a uh, commercial potential but it's finding the market and it's not not the uh, the, the market is not obvious um, so um, and I think it's it's different from an uh, from a normal kind of children's book market so <sighs> this book has been just nagging me and and I keep thinking right shall I do this shall I and oh, no, 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 I put it off and then, but I just keep coming back to it. I can't let it go. And so last Sunday I thought, I'm going to call this, I'm going to admit that this is really a vanity project. And what does that mean? It means that I don't think it's commercial. Although I still think it's commercial, but 
it has to prove itself so I'm not setting I'm not I'm assuming I'm not going to sell any copies basically on this one but of course I want to sell hundreds of thousands of it I want this to be the most successful book in the world and I and I think everybody starts out with that feeling you know ah oh, this is an amazing book oh this is an incredible idea and this is going to be amazing it's going to be fantastic and uh, generally speaking, particularly self-published books, I think um, the average is, you know, sort of a couple of hundred copies, I think. If you are thinking of publishing a children's book and becoming rich and famous, forget it. Uh, when, when I started, it was kind of really the beginning of a real golden age, particularly in Britain, of... of, of of children's books and there weren't that many authors around and um, I don't know there was just you know something in the air and so I sort of got welcomed into it because uh, <laughs> I had something to give to this kind of thing that was going on it was a zeitgeist kind of thing I suppose and um, uh, and, and 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 so it went on and of course as soon as uh, uh, it's all jk rowling's fault really jk rowling came along and then whoa, whoa, <laughs> this extraordinary thing happened uh, with harry potter um and suddenly people thought hey i could be a millionaire too and suddenly everybody wanted to write children's books and um and everybody wanted to sell children's books and they didn't just want to sell children's books. Uh, they wanted to sell hundreds of them. And they wanted to do all the kind of supermarket kind of buy one, get one freeze and all that kind of thing. And they commoditized children's books. So, you know, whereas once it used to... I, I, yeah, you know, once... I used to go to schools and it was like, oh, we've got a children's book, we've got an author in and... And and now you go to a school and it's like, oh, are you the author? <laughs> and you're not special anymore, um, which, uh, you know, I don't, you know, you know, that's vanity, isn't it? You know, you want to be special and everybody who wants to write a children's books wants to be, you know, wants people to go, oh, wow, you wrote a book. That's amazing. And, you know, that's that is vanity. Yeah, sure. And. So a lot of a lot of books do get published for vanity, particularly self-published books, um, because people will say I'm an author, and and it, they don't really care about the quality or anything like that, <laughs> and uh, they just bang out a book, get it on Amazon, get any old illustrator to do it. So you know, sort of completely culturally inappropriate. You get sort of somebody from the Philippines to knock out some <laughs> illustrations which have, just don't suit the story. Stick it up on Amazon, and then hey, I'm a children's author. And then they're surprised that they kind of only sell fifty copies to their friends, um, who are being kind. So, actually, selling books, children's books, is hard, hard business, and. Uh, over the years, all the you know, as I say, it's all got commoditized. Um, the uh, supermarkets moved in, and all these uh, you know, sort of uh, mail order companies, all that kind of thing. Amazon came along, and they just demanded higher and higher discounts from publishers, and got them, and and publishers go wow that's fantastic so these people will say um we will take say ten thousand copies but we'll only pay you this much for it and the publisher will go ka-ching ten thousand copies here's a, a lump sum fantastic and um they say how are we going to afford this oh well we won't pay the author basically so <laughs> so <laughs> so the contracts have changed dramatically in the last however many years so so the higher the discount that uh a publisher gives to a retailer or, or a book club or something like that, the higher the discount, then the lower the royalty the author gets. So basically, I think it's criminal. You know, anybody can give something away for free. And, 
anybody can sell something at a really high discount. And and if you could say, yeah, 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 I'll give you this, I'll give you that, I'll give you anything, you know, and as long as you buy this book, then they'll go, oh, all right, then, so we'll have that book. And you're only able to give those discounts because you're not paying the author. And I think it is really, 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 really naughty. So that's why I'm sort of doing a lot more stuff on my own these days um, because uh, I, I, I'm, I'm the chair, I'm the chair person of the Children's Writers and Illustrators Group of the Society of Authors here in Britain and the Society of Authors is kind of the big um, we call it the trade union I don't think it really is anyway um, I, I think we're a business confederation but that's a whole other issue um, and and so because I'm the chair of this committee, then I kind of have heard all sorts of stories over the last three or four years and from other authors and people who I really respect and think, well, you know, yeah, cool, if I could be like them. And then they're earning nothing. And, <laughs> and I don't... I don't know the publishers are doing what they do, but publishing has changed dramatically. When I started, um, basically publishers were gentlemen um, uh, who would think who were venture capitalists, and they go, "Yeah, I really like this book. Let's make this book. And let's sell it." And, and then they kind of got bought out by these enormous corporations, and so you get these huge random house corporations, Penguin and whatever, and they are beholden to their shareholders so the whole of publishing in the end doesn't become about the book it becomes about shareholder value and so um so they employ people editors and the like the creatives down at the bottom and they say yeah you'll go and make these pretty pretty little books and you know make sure you sell and uh, 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 sort of give them a fair bit of a bit of freedom, not a lot. Um, and it's why you find so many books that look the same because you get one that's successful, and everyone goes, "All oh, right, that's a successful book. Right, we'll do one exactly the same." And uh, <laughs> you know, art or anything like that doesn't come into it. It is it, with major publishers; it's purely a commercial thing. And. Uh, uh, and as I say, you know, they give away deeper and deeper discounts. The whole thing becomes, well, it, it's just, if if you were ever thinking of making, earning a living as a children's book, <laughs> particularly an author, illustrators, we get the, we get the extra fee for illustrating. Um, forget it. I Just go, go and drive a bus or something. You know, you'll get paid a lot more. Um, go in empty dustbins or something trash <laughs> anything <laughs> but don't think you're going to have a fantastic career as a children's author unless you are totally committed to it and I can tell you most children's authors they earn hardly anything from their books and they survive uh, by teaching and school visits and things like that so um so, how many copies do I have to sell? As I say, um, this is a vanity project, so I had originally thought of doing it as a Kickstarter, and then I just thought, oh, I can't be bothered. But I'm not getting a new kind of idea about that. I knew that I would always have to finish the artwork first, so now I'm thinking maybe I will do it as a Kickstarter and launch it as a Kickstarter, because no one has pre-ordered <laughs> I thought from all these videos I'm doing someone would pre-order uh, but no one has um, so I'm now convinced YouTube is no kind of a medium for um, marketing I don't think um, not for this kind of thing and so, so I'm thinking I might do Kickstarter but it's going to be a very short campaign because I don't want to spend all the time on it. I've got, 
I got another project that I really want to get started on, but I really wanted to get this out of the way and done so I don't have to think about it anymore because it takes up this kind of area of my brain. I think, yeah, but what about special delivery? What about Penny and Benny and the, uh, what happens? And so when I, so I think I'm going to do this as a Kickstarter. So I will hope to sell some copies there. Um, and then I will hope to sell copies from my website and from Amazon and things. And because it's such a different thing, I have no idea. I have no idea. This is just a gut, a, a gut instinct that this is, this is a book that some people might enjoy and might want to buy. And like I've said before as well, as a kind of a baby shower gift kind of funny little thing um, and I may be right and I may be wrong so I have a feeling this thing will it, 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 it's going to be a viral kind of thing and if if I just make it available I think someone will find it and then they'll tell somebody else and tell somebody else and it'll either become a viral success or <laughs> or it'll just become my little vanity project um, because I just love these characters, I just come to get to know them, and I just kind of want to. I want to bring them to life. So, as I said, I have this little brief moment when everyone's away on vacation. I could just do it, and so that's the way it would go. Now, what about um, <laughs> making a living as a, <laughs> how much would I normally want to? Um, I think probably I really should kind of plan that kind of thing and think, you know, um, work out how many books I need to sell for, <sighs> like a proper publisher does, uh, come up with a financial plan like that. But, uh, I haven't really done that so far. I suppose I'm I'm kind of lucky. I have all these weird income streams. So, you know, YouTube brings me a little bit and I have a little bit from here, a little bit there. And I've got, you know, a backlist of books which bring me um, odd bits of royalty here and there. And I, and I do school visits and, and, and teaching and stuff like that. Um, and it is exhausting. Um, but the the next project I really want to get on with, if it comes off, then I'm going to have to start being a bit more <laughs> business-like about the whole thing. Uh, and it's very much kind of, rather than, it's very much saying I'm going to be a publisher rather than I'm, I'm going to self-publish my own books. Um, but that's all kind of in discussion stage at the moment. And the person I'm discussing it with is on vacation, which is why I have this time. <laughs> but practically, I think what you have to do is, and I do this the first time I start thinking about a book, and I think, how many pages is it going to be? And because I'm self-publishing print on demand, and I go um, to... Ingram who I do it with and I kind of work out well if it's that shape book how much is it going to cost if it has this many pages uh, and then you can work it if I buy a hundred at a time then I can get a discount so I'll buy this amount and 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 selling through Amazon and things and um, and you can you can kind of work out and think you know I'm going to spend this amount of time on it so therefore I need to sell this many books because you know what kind of profit you're going to get and oh I'm going to have this there's a horrid kind of acid green I think this <laughs> this poo bag <laughs> this nappy sack diapers diapy sack I don't know what would what would you call it in the states I don't know we would call it a nappy sack and I want it to be this sort of a vile lime green here there we go so um yeah, I, th I think it's like any other business. You kind of think, what are, you know, what, what are my raw material costs? And um, 
you know how, how long is it going to take me you know what what's what's the investment going in here and what do i need as you know what do i need as a return on investment and in which case what's the profit margin how many copies do i need to sell it's kind of it's kind of how it works i think now you may have noticed also that i've um changed the thumbnail design and just as an experiment because i was doing something so different this week and uh, and i've been a bit more clickbaity haven't i that was i kind of was reading something last week about the youtube algorithm and how uh, it's uh, rewarding different kind of things at the moment and i thought oh, well i'll see how that goes and uh, <laughs> so i thought i'll change the change the thumbnail design and one thing or another and in the effort basically to bring in new viewers which is what youtube really wants and there's this uh, thing of ctr click-through rate on um on your videos uh, on the thumbnails so people click through from the thumbnails and the number of people that click through is your click-through rate and uh so <laughs> interestingly this week my click-through rate has gone down um and and yet my kind of uh, the my sort of loyal subscribers have actually been watching more which is kind of interesting isn't it so uh where are we now i need to put that in there this whole youtube thing is well it's constantly changing for one thing um and generally um generally my my viewers um I call them drive-by viewers that they kind of see something. Oh, I want to draw that, and they click that. And maybe they subscribe and uh, and never come back again. Um, and whereas I kind of feel what you really need is a, is a group of dedicated subscribers who keep coming back, and yet it seems that that's kind of not what YouTube is. Um, rewarding seems a strange thing um, because I would I don't know you know it's uh, YouTube of course is it's exactly the same thing as um, as publishers the same problem now that you know YouTube were do no evil yeah we're lovely you know Google and one thing or another and um, but in fact they have one aim and that is now because they're public companies and public businesses that their one aim is to create shareholder value and so <laughs> they want eyeballs <laughs> viewing <laughs> and they just want eyeballs there all day long watching it so that they can present adverts and um, they really don't care about art they don't care about the quality well they kind of no they don't care about the quality of the work you put up on youtube actually they just care about whether people watch it and you know not you know i'm sure you've watched rubbish on youtube uh and you've and you've probably seen amazing quality work on youtube which just never gets viewed and there's no rhyme or reason to it it's just what people like and you can't make things go viral you can you can do something you think might go viral but you can't make it go viral and as far as youtube are concerned they just want eyeballs and they don't really care where they come from uh you know sort of terrorist videos whatever really they don't care and as long as it provides eyeballs for advertisers then they are happy so so their algorithms then kind of work to that kind of premise and every time you think you've got it right they change it <laughs> they reward stuff that gets eyeballs
and it's the same thing in children's publishing that you have to be constantly changing shifting and changing working out what's you know what's the the latest thing and you know what's the new fashion and or you do a vanity project and you do it for art's sake and for the sake of creating the thing that you've always wanted to create and then maybe just maybe you might have written a masterpiece and people will realize and appreciate it and suddenly it will go viral and, and it'll become a bestseller the chances of that happening are very very slim and the chances of that happening with a traditionally published book with a proper publisher and everything are very slim too they have no idea what is going to be popular they print a load of books they publish a load of books and they hope that one or two will sell really well and cover the cost of all the other ones <laughs> it's classic venture capitalism there's a that there and I think we need a bit more shadow around the bottom uh, I'm running out of water in my brush there we go make sure you're subscribed and keep coming back to the shoe rainer drawing channel see if I finish this in the next five days before I go off to the Edinburgh festival uh, in Edinburgh uh, in the meantime keep drawing 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 practice 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 and I'll see you next time you take care now bye bye